Here in New England, short, gloomy days and long, dark nights tend to keep many people indoors for much of the winter. But as we recently found, there's plenty to see outside if you're willing to bundle up and look. From seals to snowy owls, Rhode Island attracts migratory birds from as far as the Arctic Circle as the temperature there starts to plummet. Many bird watchers hope to catch a glimpse of these winged visitors as they pass through the ocean state. Soon after the sun rises over this rocky coastline, bird lovers gather. Have any of you been to Black Point before? Some of you, maybe? Okay. Excited for what winter wildlife they might find. You had a catbird? Yeah, it was, it was a big gray. I didn't see it, but good. Oh, there it is. Flying, yeah. Yep. Indeed. Yeah, in, in this shrub back here is a uh, cat bird. Every Wednesday morning, the Audubon Society of Rhode Island organizes a bird walk. So I'm going to leave this low for people. On this day, the group is trekking through the Black Point fishing area in Narragansett off of Ocean Road. So in my scope, if you want to look, there are some surf scoters. They're looking for birds that flock to Rhode Island during the winter time. Don, they have that orange beak, right? They have an orange beak and they have that white patch on their chin and on the back of their head. Including the ever popular harlequin ducks. You typically see the harlequins in uh, close to shore where the waves are breaking. They like the, the stirred up water. These enthusiasts know there's a short window of time to get the best view of these colorful ducks. So there's uh, harlequin ducks. Let's see what else we have. But birders don't have to travel to the coast to spot winter wildlife. Photographer Jason Major likes to venture into the woods along the Patuxent River Trail in Cranston. So the Patuxent River Trail has uh, a few owls, resident owls of its own. Um, I've spotted some barred owls here. They're pretty, uh, pretty easy to spot and very photogenic. Some of those walks have resulted in mesmerizing pictures. He's captured it all from these black scoters in Charlestown to mergansers in Connecticut. He's also photographed a short-eared owl in flight and on the ground, as well as a group of seals he found resting on rocks in Sakonet Point. That was a kingfisher. The one that just perched up on... The one that made that squawky sound. We set out one January morning to see what we could find. And soon into our hike, Major was clicking away. He spotted a green-winged teal in the river. There was also a male-belted kingfisher perched on a tree and a dark-eyed junco near the banks of the river. He says these are all birds that can be spotted there in the wintertime. Wandering over to the other ones. So nice. Is it easier to spot animals during the winter months? Well, just for the sake that, you know, all the leaves are down. So now you can, uh, you know, you can look pretty far into the woods, uh, up into the trees where, where a lot of birds and, and other animals are, you know, hiding out, uh, especially during the day. So let's see if I can find, there they are. Over in Middletown, there's another flock of birds bobbing around. Satuous Point National Wildlife Refuge is home to the second largest wintering population of harlequin ducks on the Atlantic coast. This is a stopover too, so it's not only a wintering site, a refuge, it's also a stopover. So if they're, they're migrating through, this is a place for them to rest and rejuvenate, refuel, and then head more south. Janice Nipshinsky is the visitor services manager for the Rhode Island National Wildlife Refuges. What a beautiful day. It is. I mean, yeah, it's not bone chilling, it's, it's no. comfortable. She showed us some of the winter birds that migrate to Rhode Island for part of the season. Sometimes there's some up on this edge around the corner. They're still in the water there. Satuous Point sits on 242 acres, complete with marshes, meadows, and beaches. And this is where a lot of birds will come to rest and to feed. Nipshinsky led us down a path on the preserve to spot some wintering waterfowl. Look right in here. You see the two ducks? Oh, I do. How beautiful. <laughs> you wouldn't oh, know I that. I see them. 
They bop up and down. Yeah, because now I don't see them. They're down. <laughs> oh, now I see them again. <laughs> wow. You always look for them in the white water rafting. It didn't take long to find our share of winter birds. How beautiful. The day Michelle became a birder. Oh, I see four. <laughs> Nipshinsky says they come down from Canada and the Arctic coast to bask in the relatively warmer Rhode Island waters. Many of them spend the whole season. Sea ducks will spend the whole season. So you got the common eider, bufflehead, holoquin, scalp, mergansers, quite a few. You light up as you're talking about and that, this. They're just, they're just beautiful. It's they're exciting. Just, yeah, it is. So I, that's why people will brave it, um, the winter cold out here. But then I see people just enjoying walking. Just this, you can just tell, they, were, they get fresh air, their spirit, you know, get refreshed. It's almost like the migratory birds when they stop over. The people are also stopping here to rest and to refuel their spirits, just like the birds. Come on, there she is. Major says going outside has been therapeutic for him too. A lot of times during, during those really tough winter months uh, that we've had previously, I just don't feel like doing anything. And getting, getting out and getting my camera and getting my gear and going out into the woods, sometimes is a, is a little bit, I have to push myself to do it. But every time I do, I feel so much better being, you know, spending some time outdoors, even if it's only half an hour. Now, what are those over there? He's on the search for a snowy owl this season. No luck yet, but he's hopeful. He's photographed them in previous years at Satuous Point. The snowy owls are always uh, your, mo your more exciting animals, uh, your more exciting birds, just, just because of their rarity. Uh, you know, some years they might not show up at all. So when one does, they usually attract a lot of attention. In the winter, we could be fortunate enough to see the snowy owl because they come here to feed. But Nipshinsky says it's important to keep distance from these majestic birds and stay at least 200 feet away. Even though it's kind of looking at you and you think that, oh, yeah, look, they, they want attention, they could be having a lot of stress go on and they're hunting. So if you disturb their, when they're hunting, they're not getting enough food to go back to where they come, like the Arctic coast, and they will, they will die on the way. We had four, four snowy owls were dead from um, with malnutrition. They didn't have enough food in them. Those might be more females. Interesting. Once Major spots wildlife along the Patuxent, he enjoys coming back to check on them from a distance. I think it's really neat to be able to experience them while they're on their while they're on their uh, their their long journeys. And you'll be out here even when it's in the teens, 20 mm -hmm. degrees. That won't deter you from coming out. Well, it doesn't it doesn't stop the birds from coming out, so uh, it's not going to stop me from coming out. The worst thing you can do is try to find a bird in the scope before, yeah. <laughs> before you know where it is. And it's also not stopping these birders from scanning the skies. It looks like a loon to me, but let's see. They know the change in season comes with unique sights and sounds. Who would think this is January? 